Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Theo. On today's video, we are going to upgrade the small tiny intercooler that is found on the Mini Cooper. Pretty much installing this bad boy right here. Yes, I love it. It's bigger, better and it's going to provide a better cooling to the Mini Cooper. Follow me on this quick DIY. Perfect. Perfect. is the third part of a series of three videos that I started recently. The first part, I installed this noise maker. On the second part, I upgraded this pipe, which is the hot side of the intercooler. And then on the final part, which is the one we're doing today, I'm going to change the intercooler, which is located behind this little shielding right there. So why do you need to upgrade the intercooler? Well, the intercooler on the Mini Cooper is quite small. It actually acts like a bottleneck on the whole cooling system. So upgrading it is going to help on your engine temperature. And the fact that I'm planning to tune my car is will be better because it's going to provide a better cooling to the engine compared to what is in here right now. So let's go ahead and start the process. This is fairly simple. All we have to do is remove this, remove the bumper, and then swap the intercooler itself. It sounds pretty simple, but there's a few things with the Mini that we have to do. For example, to remove the bumper, we have to take part of this little guard right here because there's one screw located here. We need to remove this by removing one, two, three, four. Then there's a few tabs on the bottom here that will remove this piece. Then this will expose two screws, one here and one there that we have to remove. After we do that, on the bottom here, there are a few screws that we have to remove also. After that, we remove all the connection for the fog lights and then the sensors and that will free up the bumper for us to remove it. Once the bumper is out, we go ahead and install this intercooler. That's the process I'm going to show you guys today. So please go ahead and follow. The first part is to use a trim remover to remove this tab. One, two, three, four. So pretty much you have your trim remover. You put it in there. And then you pull it up then remove the screw just like that you repeat the same process for all four of them right there are a few tabs here so where the screwdriver is going not sure if the camera is picking that but pretty much what you do is you push it inside and then you pull and it will free up the yeah, the plastic Right, that one is done. I have to repeat the same process for the rest of them. Let me do it off camera and then I'm going to explain to you what I did. To remove the grip, pretty much what you're doing is you look at this tab, it's four of them one, two, three, and four. So once you look at the tab, you pretty much take a screwdriver, push it like that, and then pull the grill from the outside. You repeat the same step on all four of them, and that will go ahead and free this grill. Normally you're supposed to have a screw right here and a tab right there and one on the middle and another screw just like the one that is supposed to be here on the other side. But it seems like the previous owner, you know, removed the bumper someday and never, you know, bothered to place it back. So I don't have to remove anything there because there's nothing. Now on your car, you may have a screw here. I believe it is a T25 or T30, the screw that is here. And then the tab pretty much is just like the one removed for the grill. You use your trim removal kit and then remove the tab right here. Once you secure, you remove those, you should be set on the bottom here. The next step is quite simple. We remove this tab right here, this tab right here, and then this little piece. So to remove the tab, it's pretty much a Phillips screwdriver. You just unscrew that, unscrew that, and use your trim removal kit to pull it, pull it. Then this one right here, you just twist it, you know, and then you can pull it out. Once it's removed, I will show you the next steps. All right, after you remove that, you can pull the cover on the side. So normally this is the screw that we want to remove. So all this job that we're doing is to pretty much remove this screw right here. We need to also remove this connection for this aftermarket uh, side marker that I have. There is the ambient sensor right there that we need to remove the connection, the fog light in here, we need to remove the connection to that. And then this is the, pretty much the tab that we have to remove and normally there's a second tab that is here but normally uh, it looks like it is missing on my car so on your car you might have a tab here so you have to remove that as well 
So to remove the tab, again, you use your trim removal kit, remove that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove this tab, remove all the connections that I mentioned, one, two, and three for the fog light. And then after that, I'm going to pull this trim right here. Using a T25, we go ahead and remove this screw right here. There you go. Using a T25, we remove one and two. Those should be the final screw that we have to remove. For the bumper to be off, we have to remove these two. For me, I have to also remove this tow hook that I placed right here. Normally, if you don't have this, you don't have to do this step. So this step only applies to me. Or if to people that have tow hook license plate, you have to remove that as well. Now with everything removed, I should be able to pull the bumper, but I'm pretty sure I forgot something. So let me just go ahead and try to pull it out. Seems like it is something holding. Probably this vent. I might have to remove this vent. Let me check. The bumper was not really stuck. I just had to pull harder. So now that the bumper is off, this is how the bottom looks like right here. And this is pretty much the intercooler that we are trying to remove. Now, to remove that, the final thing we have to do is we have to securely uh, remove this little clamp. And then there's one on the other side. So it's pretty much you use a screwdriver, put it in here, and then remove it. I've done this step on the video where I installed this hot size pipe. So I'm not going to film this. If you want to see how this is removed, go ahead and watch that video. I'm going to put a link right now. So let me go ahead and remove this pipe and the other one and then remove the intercooler. Using an eight millimeter socket, remove this screw right here, holding the intercooler and the other screw right there also holding the intercooler. I'll go ahead and do that right now. Here's the difference between the factory intercooler and this aftermarket. I got this from Amazon at a very cheap price. So sometimes when you get this type of intercooler, you might have fitment issues. After I mount it in here, I'm going to see and let you guys know. But this is the factory one. You can see that it is very, very small. This one is a step intercooler. Step meaning that it has this portion right here. This portion is actually even bigger than that one right there. So let's go ahead and mount this intercooler on the car. Since my car is a face slip version, there is this added protection bar that on the pre LCI version you will not have. So I have to actually remove this crash bar because it's tied to this one in order for me to install the intercooler. This is an additional step if you have the new engine. Now to do that, there's three 13 bolt, one, two, and the third one right there. And then there are T31, two that you have to remove on the other side. Same thing on the other side. Once you do that, you remove, and also this eight millimeter right here. Once you remove those, you will be able to pull this crash bar out. That's exactly what I'm going to do right now. After you remove all the screws, you should be able to free the guard like that. There you go, you can put it on the side. Now let's go ahead and mount the intercooler. Once you finish installing, it should be looking like this. Now, let's go ahead and mount the crush bar. So I had a little unfortunate incident where I broke the screw that goes here. So that's why you see I put some zip tie here, but normally you should put the screw here, but that screw is broken. As you can see, it is stuck inside there. So I don't feel like spending time to try to remove it. I'm just going to leave it like that because it is very, very, very secure as it is right now. So I'm put this crush bar and do everything else in reverse. I'm going to show you once everything is done, just because you know everything that we have to do now is the reverse of what we did. So let me go ahead and mount everything and do a startup once the job is done. The bumper has been installed. Everything is there. As you can see, 
everything installed let me go ahead and remove the car from the jack then i'm going to start it up make sure that everything works fog lights everything is working then i will call it a day all right everything is back in normal back in order I actually went ahead and removed the little mesh grill that is inside here just to kind of increase the airflow inside the engine. You don't have to do that, that's just uh, me. So let me go ahead and start the car, make sure there is no light on the dash and we will end the video. So on this note, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you like this video and also give a like.